So I think by this point, we all have that same sort of like burning question inside of our minds. Are major laptop manufacturers like Asus ROG, Legion, and a bunch of other ones sort of doing AMD laptop CPUs dirty by capping their GPU options and also seemingly limiting their features and maybe even using older designs. Well, I wanted to find out exactly what was going on here by using three identical Strix G16 models. The only thing that differs between these three are their processors. So what have we got here? We've got one Strix G16 with a Ryzen 9 9955HX and the other one with the 9955HX 3D. And alongside those is the G16 with an Intel Ultra 9 275HX. GPUs, storage, and memory are a literal copy and paste right across the board. And even their prices are within about the same ballpark. But look, other than the specifications, when you just take a glance at these laptops that I have here in front of me, well, those sort of conspiracy theories about there being some sort of anti-AMD sentiment at some of these companies, well, they might have maybe a little bit of foundation in reality. Because look, the new Strix G16 from 2025 for the Intel CPU comes with a brand new design. It also has features that have been sort of brought up to a 2025 expectation level. On the other hand, the AMD laptops here in the same Strix G16 lineup use a design and have many features that date back to early 2023. And let's look at this from a high level perspective. The Intel laptop gets a full coverage vapor chamber while the AMD one gets the older heat pipe setup. The new design exhausts all of its hot air out the back while the older one blasts your mouse hand with all of that heat. One gets Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4 and Thunderbolt 5. The other is stuck on Wi-Fi 6E, BT 5.3 and USB 4. The Intel chassis has three USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A connectors and ROG's new slim power adapter, while the AMD laptop gets two Type-A ports and has the older barrel style input. Even the wired LAN connector gets in on the action, with the Intel Strix G16 being rated for 2.5 gigabits per second for the RTX 5070 Ti model. Meanwhile, the Ryzen models only get 1G connectivity. And the list goes on too, both M.2 slots on the Intel support Gen 5 SSDs, whereas there's only one for the Ryzen CPUs. The Intel laptop gets a slightly larger trackpad too, and to me, at least, it feels a lot snappier, has better palm detection, and crisper left and right buttons than the AMD one. I also love the cool new toolless slide to upgrade mechanism ROG's latest designs use. And while the older chassis is a breeze to get into compared to a lot of other laptops, you still need to remove a bunch of screws. And of course, I think the biggest thing here is that the Intel design can be configured with an RTX 5080, whereas for some reason, Heaven knows why the AMD design tops out at just an RTX 5070 Ti. And while yes, there are some very, very big differences underneath the hoods of these two different laptop designs, one from, I guess, 2023 and the other one from 2025, if you look at it from a different perspective, you're actually gonna realize that in almost three full years of ROG laptop evolution, there has been very little forwards progress made in some areas here. Because both the Intel and AMD laptops are the same size and actually pretty portable overall without any issues slipping them into a compact laptop backpack. Though the Ryzen one does weigh about half a pound less than the Intel. And while the new design does look a bit sleeker overall with cleaner lines and nicely curved edges, the older one does actually feel a bit slimmer when it's in your hands. And speaking of being in your hands, the new lid is a fingerprint magnet, while the Ryzen laptop stayed pretty clean overall. There's a few other similarities too. Both have the exact same keyboard feel, which isn't the best I felt on the gaming laptop. That award goes to, of course, Legion, but it's still one of the better ones out there. I do like the understated deck design of the new Intel system though. The screens, well, they're identical to one another too, and both did very well in our testing with excellent color accuracy, good uniformity, and over 500 nits of peak non-HDR brightness. So it seems like the Intel system does have a sometimes very significant edge in the features department. But as they say, the proof is in the actual performance of these laptops, because if 
If experience has taught me anything, it's that gamers are willing to sacrifice in some small areas if they get the absolute best bang for their buck in terms of overall gaming frame rates. And for anyone who thinks that Asus might be kneecapping performance here, let me start with this. They absolutely didn't. The 9955HX and HX3D get pushed right up to their maximum wattage on a relatively compact 16 inch laptop, just like the 275HX. The only way you'd get more from the AMD chips is jumping up to a bigger 18 inch device. The same thing goes for the RTX 5070 Ti's in these. Both designs actually overclocked their GPUs past Nvidia's maximum TGP. So instead of 115 watts, they're actually running to 130 watts in turbo mode, which is the mode we ended up testing in. And at 1600p, which is the native resolution for these specific laptops, for the most part, they perform ideally identically to one another in most games. What we're seeing here is a complete GPU bottleneck. Even with the RTX 5070 Ti running at 15 watts over Nvidia's maximum TGP. That means AMD's powerful 9955HX3D just gets completely hamstrung by an upper mid-range GPU. I mean, we've already seen what the entire 9955HX series can do, and it's not just the X3D, at least when they're paired up with something like an RTX 5080 or 5090, and it just feels like so much potential is going to waste here. There is some good news though. The RTX 5070 Ti laptops are often hundreds upon hundreds of dollars cheaper than ones with the RTX 5080s, and yet they still provide very competitive frame rates. Then again, these things go on sale like all the time. So if you can find an RTX 5080 laptop within say 300 bucks of one of these and it fits into your budget, that would be a much better buy. Of course, there are a few games where the HX3D does provide some tangible benefits, but they're few and far between. And those mostly show some small uplifts in 1% lows, whereas averages, they pretty much stay unaffected right across the board. The only game we found to have a net benefit was CS2, where the 9955HX3D powered the RTX 5070 Ti to win over the RTX 5080 laptops. And yes, that is ultra impressive. And I'm sure there are other titles that would see something similar, but we just haven't come across them yet. And that whole situation, well, it brings up another problem, which is pricing because you're paying a hefty premium for the X3D, and yet it's all for nothing because the 5070 Ti limits its performance in the vast majority of games. That also causes both Ryzen laptops to run in a statistical dead heat against a 275HX system that's in an upgraded chassis and costs sometimes hundreds of dollars less than the G16 with a 9955HX3D. And we didn't stop there either. I also wanted to give these AMD laptops a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. So what we did is we reran all of these games at 1200p to see if we could sort of remove some of that GPU bottleneck, allow them to stretch their legs a bit more. And let's just say the, the results were, they were pretty interesting because at this lower resolution, the 9955HX still essentially ties the Intel Ultra 9 275HX system. But the X3D, well, that started pulling further ahead to the point where it boasted the best 1% lows of all the systems we tested here, even ones with the RTX 5080. Meanwhile, its averages almost tied the much more powerful and almost $800 more expensive SCAR 16. And I guess this just goes to show that yes, the X3D does have a hell of a lot more left in its tank. It's just being held back by the RTX 5070 Ti. So much so that you, you just cannot justify its price premium over the standard HX model if you're playing any games at the G16's native resolution. And yes, I'm going to place a huge amount of the blame here on AMD's shoulders too. If manufacturers want an X3D CPU, their only choice is an inefficient, hot running, expensive 32 thread monster. Meanwhile, a laptop version of the more efficient, much less expensive 9800X3D would have been so much better suited for gaming laptops, but it doesn't exist and it will likely never be released. I mean, imagine a system with an imaginary 9800HX3D and an RTX 5070 Ti. That could be what it takes to finally, finally hit Nvidia's mythical RTX 5000 series laptop prices. Instead, the reason why AMD wanted to put this chip into gaming laptops is very simple. They wanted to win in CPU-centric benchmarks, which is just, 
on a gaming laptop, it just doesn't make sense. And you see that here in Cinebench, where the 275HX actually wins against both 9955HX processors, and it would have absolutely demolished that more efficient 8-core 16-thread X3D part. But again, that doesn't matter for games and gamers. Meanwhile, the AMD-based Strix G16s can narrowly beat the 275HX model, and yet it's still a lot closer than you might expect, since ASUS is running a ton of juice into that Intel processor. So there will always be some situations where Team Blue pulls ahead, even in multi-core workloads like Handbrake, but in general, it's a three-way tie between the G16s, regardless of the CPU being used here, even in creator workloads like Lightroom. On the other hand, something like Photoshop combines multi-core processing with storage subsystem performance, so the two AMD laptops get a win since their SSDs can run quite a bit faster than the ones in the Intel systems. But the moment we get back into GPU-centric benchmarks, the RTX 5070 Ti caps overall system performance in all these devices, so they get, once again, identical performance. The additional processing horsepower of the 9955HX and HX3D do allow them to get narrow wins over the 275HX system in NLEs like Resolve and Premiere, though the race between the Strix G16 laptops is almost too close to call. And yes, absolutely, there are some additional sacrifices that the ROG design team had to make with the AMD versions of these laptops that you don't see with the benchmarks. And one of those is running these AMD CPUs at 130 watts on a system that has a traditional heat pipe setup. Meanwhile, like we saw before, the Intel system gets that upgraded vapor chamber design. So thermal management between these two is quite a bit different. Basically, it all leads to the Intel Strix G16 becoming one of the quietest high-performance laptops we've tested this year while gaming. The AMD designs, meanwhile, well, they're some of the loudest 16-inch laptops despite using a less power-hungry RTX 5070 Ti. GPU temperatures, on the other hand, well, they are very well managed right across the board on both Intel and AMD versions. I just wish these low temperatures on the 9955HX systems didn't come with such high fan speeds. CPU temperatures, meanwhile, have all the systems within a few degrees of one another, but none of the Strix G16s are what I would call cool, since they're all pushing close to the 90 degree mark. But at least with the Intel version, those temperatures are tied at the hip to excellent acoustical performance. Both AMD systems were noticeably louder, but they're far, far from the most annoying laptops that we've tested. On a more positive note, all of the Strix G16 models provided near silent operation while doing some basic things like web browsing. Anyways, another area where AMD HX series laptops have historically struggled, especially in the high-end gaming market, is with battery life. And look, the HX and HX3D that we tested in the MSI Raider and Vector, th th that was just almost unbelievably bad. These are a bit better, but not by much. I mean, the numbers here, well, they aren't terrible, I guess, but there must be some kind of AMD-derived firmware limitation, at least on the X3D, since this isn't the first time we're seeing the standard HX being significantly better. And the Intel G16, well, it's on a whole other planet, getting almost double the X3D's battery life. Switching to streaming online video, and it gets even worse for the AMD devices. Though instead of Intel offering four or more additional hours away from a plug, the gap is now between two and maybe three hours here and there. Nonetheless, if you're looking to maximize your time on battery, I'd avoid the Ryzen 9000HX series altogether, at least for now. The AMD laptops do get significantly better numbers than the Intel one when they're used for gaming on battery. And this is the, the big deal here. Even if we can push all of these hiccups aside, I still would not recommend the AMD Ryzen version of the Strix G16. Look, it isn't like Asus is treating Ryzen processors like, I don't know, second-class citizens here from a performance standpoint. They get just as good performance as the Ultra 9 275HX. The problem here, it stems from them being popped into an older laptop design that simply lacks all the modern features and creature comforts found in the brand new Intel chassis. Not to mention the abysmal battery life we found. And I also have to go on another little rant here and this time it's going to be directly at ASUS. I've been sort of taking a neutral stance with them throughout this video, but that ends here. 
Them asking $200 to $400 more for the X3D version of this laptop versus these other two versions is, is a bloody joke, right? Because they've tied it at the hip to an upper mid-range GPU, so it just can't flex its muscles in any way. That $200 to $400, it just goes up in smoke. It just gets burnt to nothing because it doesn't offer one iota more gaming performance unless you find one of those sort of halo titles where the x3d is actually able to pull ahead and it's just not worth it and the question here is why why was this done because this strix g16 has a chassis that was used last year with a fire breathing 14900 hx and an rtx 4080 running at 175 watts but then they go and use that exact same design for a lower wattage ryzen x3d cpu in 2025 and guess what nope no RTX 5080 for you guys. Honestly, it's just infuriating because ASUS is absolutely maximizing the performance of the RTX 5070 Ti configuration, but they're also actively preventing the X3D from justifying its price premium. So overall, this to me is a lose-lose situation for the AMD versions of the Strix G16. Because look, the the 275HX version with this new chassis and updated features, it's actually a damn good gaming laptop. I just wish from the bottom of my heart that AMD CPUs were given the same chance to shine. Anyways, I'm Mike with Hara Canucks and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.